organisms always came back. Then Helen heard that Winthrop University Hospital was successfully treating Parkinson's disease and other movement disorders with an advanced surgical procedure called deep brain stimulation. They wanted so much to help me, and I trusted them. Winthrop neurosurgeons inserted tiny electrodes in the area of Helen's brain that was triggering spasms. For a while, nothing much happened. My doctors just kept trying until one day I realized my head was steady and straight. After so long, to look someone in the eye and have a normal conversation, it was like a miracle. Where other options failed, Winthrop's Movement Disorders team gave Helen her life back. To learn more, call 1-866-WINTHROP or go to winthrop.org. Winthrop University Hospital. Your health means everything. The people at Nissan know you and your family rely on your car every day for work, school, errands, and helping neighbors do the same. If your car was lost or damaged during the storm, we want to help you get back on the road and back to normal. To do it, we're offering employee pricing, which provides up to 1500 in savings on select models on top of existing offers. When you replace your car with a new Nissan, you'll pay what we pay. Visit InsideNissan.com. Get your storm relief employee pricing voucher. Then get to your neighborhood Nissan. savings. Plus, make no payments for 90 days. Visit InsideNissan.com to get back on the road. And back is the things that matter most. Employee pricing available only to residents of FEMA affected states. For purchase or lease of new Nissan and Infinity vehicles from dealer stock. Subject to proof of weather damage claim for vehicle and credit approval. Offer good through January 2nd, 2013. Call 1-888-858-8319 for details. Or see InsideNissan.com or dealer for details. Man, you look like old husbands. I don't know. Listen. I listen in the morning. That's the list you want to be on. I don't want to live that down. I wasn't number one. That's what I'm hanging up and I'm calling my dog. I wasn't number one. That's your liberty on two. Anyway. All right, listen in the morning. Morning from 6 till 10. On 77 WABC. The top talk host in America. All on one great radio station. 77 WABC. reporter around. Of course, you see him every day on the Fox Business Network. Also writes a great column, The Daily Beast and uh, The New York Post. And a best-selling author, lots of great books. And it's good to have him back with us. He's on the line now. Charlie Gasparino, how are you? How are you, Mark? Very good. Uh, did you have a great Thanksgiving? I guess. Thanksgiving. That means we ate lasagna as opposed to turkey. <laughs> well, that's a better Thanksgiving. It was good. Uh, and let me ask you about that. Uh, President Obama, who's never been that business friendly, has a CEO meeting. He invites all these guys in who he's had a bad relationship with for four years. What, what, tell us what happened with that meeting. Well, I mean, I'm getting this from people in there who are talking with their friends, right? So they were, these are unvarnished, you know, not like they're trying to pump me. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, how, this is how great Obama is. I wish to point out that these are CEOs of major companies. They do a lot of business with the federal government. So, you know, it's people like Jeff Immel to GE and Dave Cody of, uh, of Honeywell and you know, a few others. There weren't any banks there, except, unless you call Amex a bank. It's intentional to see. Yeah. But these are guys he met with, though, many of them, the first time he got elected, nothing came with it. Right. A lot of them are in his various, like, Jeff Immel runs the CEO council, right? Or, excuse me, his jobs council. Uh, and others, you know, work on the, uh, you know, the business roundtable. So he meets with them regularly or, in, for, you know, at times. And what was interesting is what they were saying. The they, they word coming out is that, you know, in the past when Obama meets with CEOs, it's like he reads from a script. It's a very scripted affair. Everybody's stiff. You go around the room and he leaves. He doesn't really care. You don't get the, you know, you're not really having a, a give and take. At, at very least at this one, from what I understand, there was no script. Um, he didn't read from the teleprompter. He's done that before at some of these meetings. Really? Yes. Uh, at, at the business roundtable, uh, one of the, one of his meetings did a closed door meeting with them, which he did read from a, a, a scripted teleprompter. I, I understand. Uh, at this this meeting, uh, according to I'm taking reading my notes right now from my, I spoke with somebody with direct knowledge of it. Said it was a there was a question and answer. There was back and forth. It was open dialogue. Uh, open discussion. Um, you could interrupt him. Is what they said, uh, meaning that you could actually. He said something. You could say, "Well, how about this?" Now, is that a little bit 
says it's the usual bromide, I'm pretty sure. Uh, whether he takes it to... That, you know, knows... It, it seems like he understands negotiating. I mean, he would love to co-op business leaders and use them as his sort of prop, as he uses, like, Warren Buffett all the time to raise tax. You know what I'm saying? Uh, which I think is a thing. Most of these guys, it's unscripted, though. It's stupid to do right now. I don't care if it's part of a grand bargain or not. I mean, right now, raising taxes is, like, the worst thing because we only have 2% of growth and we're mm -hmm. And every now and then, we get a figure that looks like the economy wants to push out of this thing. You can justify it if it solves the problem, but it, it doesn't even raise any revenue. It's not enough. Right? It raises a fraction of what we need. Right, and, and its impact could be worse. It could be even worse than any good that, it, that, it, that occurs. Um, so that's where we are. I, I think, you know, you can see in the next couple of days, maybe the next week, these talks possibly heat up a little bit, you know. Here's the problem that they face. If we do hit this fiscal cliff, which means, you know, other than current law, yeah. Yeah, automatic tax increases in major way across the board, every income level. And on top of that, what big time cuts in defense spending and everything. That's why they call it the fiscal cliff. It could slow down the economy tyrannically. Uh, if people start worried about that, I mean, that could really hit uh, consumer spending during Christmas season, right? Holiday spending, which is kind of where these big retailers make, make a lot of their money, and that's going to have an impact on the economy in a major way, even before the real stuff hits the fan. and the Republicans will give in on some taxes for the rich. What, what defines rich? Does that mean rates? You know, I, I think it means rates, but then again, you know, they may, you know, they have base problems, the Republicans. You know, I know they want to reach out to other groups, but you lose your base, you get over it. And I, I wouldn't be opposed to raising taxes in the market, but Bobby was being honest about it. He came out and said, look, this is not going to raise much revenue.